If you're a radio ham who's interested in tracking satellites, you're going to need some software. Lucky for you, I've got the solution. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie with me, Keith. Now I've produced a number of videos on working FM satellites and the International Space Station. I'll leave a link in the description below. But you're going to need a bit of software to ensure that you know where the satellites are and be able to track them. So this is it. Let's crack on and have a look. Right, so let's look at Orbitron. First thing you need to do is visit this website and I'll leave that in the description below. And once you're on the um, satellite tracking page, go to Downloads and find the latest install and download it. Once you've downloaded it, simply boot it up into whichever folder you want it to, uh, to go in. Once you've loaded it, you should end up with a screen that looks very similar to this. And there's some setting up to do before we crack on. First thing is, this is the main screen. This line here represents the grey line. There's the sun and there's the moon. Over here are a list of uh, available satellites. There's a couple of elements here that we'll talk about. There's a clock and there's also a radar. That radar is a representation of where you are in the middle and you'll see lines protrude over this to indicate where the satellite will be in the sky over your location. Down here is where we do all the main settings. So the first thing is, look here at mode. You want it as real time rather than simulation and check that the date and the time are all correct. You can choose local time or obviously UTC. Next thing to do is you've got a number of panels down the bottom here where you can go through and the first one we're going to go to is the setup which is the hammer and the spanner. First thing to look at here is down the bottom check for new versions of messages make sure that's ticked TLE or two line element update confirmation tick that that's done save profile on exit and also exit confirmation select how you want your date to be um, set out in England we work on day month and year so that's how that's set up and also look at the uh, the clock next thing is the world map there are a number of different maps that you can select so for instance you may wish to have your shown as a coloured map or as you can see grey, green and all these different colours such as looking at where the satellite is and its um, elliptical path they all change along with it. There's various other ones depending on how um, you know, if you want to pretend you're in a submarine, you can have that one as well. But I quite like the blue one, and it looks quite nice displayed on a large screen as well. So simply apply that. So when we look at the TLE, or two-line element updater, these are all the groups of satellites that you can update. And you select these to update as you go along. As you can see here, this is updating the satellites and getting all their Kepler information, in other words, where they are in time and space at the moment, the latest information. Time synchronization, you can set your own uh, world clock synchronizer here. And by clicking on the bolt of uh, lightning on the world, you can synchronize the clock. Miscellaneous and extras. So in here, there are other elements. You can take time just to look at these and select any that, uh, that you may want. And we'll apply that. OK, and come out of there. Other things we've got on here are 
you can have the mini radar over here on or off and as I said previously you'll see the various tracks and trails and captions as in the arrival time and the departure time of the satellite as it passes over. You can also remove such things as the sun, the moon and all the other bits and pieces that are on here. Um, if you don't like the grid then you can take the grid off as well. I suggest leaving footprint on because then you can see when the satellite comes over how much of the footprint you're actually going to be able to, uh, to have. Location, this is very important. Going on here, you need to set your own location. You can see, because I'm in uh, the east of the UK, mine is already pre-sent with my call sign, my grid square, and my altitude in metres above sea level. If you put the um, grid square in, it generally sorts out the longitude and latitude, and then you give it a name, and I've given it the name of Mendelsham, which is the, uh, the town that I live in. You can also select from these towns and cities that are in the list as well. So if you decided that you wanted to just click on one of those, you could do that and that would set that for you as well. But it's important to do that, otherwise all your predictions will not be accurate. Satellite information. Well, this will give you the information of the satellites that are highlighted. Prediction information, this is where you set how you want your predictions to come out. In other words, on here, when you select a satellite from the list, you can then predict when that satellite will be in range. You may want to link this to your own radio. And to do this, you go into this section here. And one of the things I suggest you do is you download the WISP DDE software. I'll leave a link in that at the bottom. When you do that, it will bring you up this box here when you run it. And from here, you can select your rotor, if you're using one, and your radio. And for instance, here at the moment, I've just got it simply showing Radio 1, which is the FT817 on my Comport 12 at a 38400 board rate. Again, you can set this up how you want, but that will bring it up here. And what that will do is that will talk to your radio via your CAT cable and give you the uplink and the downlink frequency. And it will shift with the Doppler shift as uh, the satellite goes over. So, Let's look at putting some of these in place. First of all, let's load the uh, two line elements that we've downloaded. So there's the latest one. Let's open that up and we've loaded that in. FunCube, which is AO73, and we can do that by clicking on it. And now you can see that we've got a line that's come up, a yellow line, and it's showing us where the CubeSat is. Nothing showing here because at the moment it's not going to be coming over us at all. Let's click the International Space Station. We can see where the International Space Station is and by clicking on it we can now see there's a footprint around it where it is currently that it looks like it is going to come over us and this is confirmed here by this line showing us the trajectory of the International Space Station as it passes overhead. So with the system running, if I want to find out a bit more about FunCube that's highlighted here, I can go down to Prediction and now hit Predict. And because I've got this set for 24 hours, it's giving me the next available passes of the fun cube over my location. It's given me the azimuth and the elevation, its range. And combined with that, if I now go into rotor and radio, it will give me the downlink, the uplink, the Doppler shift, 
and you'll see this change as it goes along and also the mode and again if your radio is uh, connected with a cat cable this will then change your radio for you so you can see there's lots of functionality to this and it's just a matter of uh, sitting down having a look and you can select as many of these as you'd like and it gets quite amazing when you start to realize how many satellites there are up above your head so there you go Orbitron what I believe to be the best free to use software package available for amateur and commercial satellite tracking now I do stand to be corrected and if somebody wants to leave a comment and tell me otherwise that's great give me your views and if somebody wants to give me a software package to try I'll give it a go and I'll give you my honest response if you found this uh, video informative and enjoyable think about subscribing to my channel don't forget to hit the bell and then you'll be notified every time I put new content up and while you're at it consider giving me a thumbs up that way I know that I'm doing something right and I'll keep on producing content so my name's Keith my call sign is G0FEA and I'm the ham radio junkie I'll catch you next time <laughs>